Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Um, first of all, thank you very much to Revive Newt for uh, 50 gifted subs and a $150 donation. What are we gonna do with you, Revive Newt? Can we get some? Can we get some hearts in the chat? Just what? What a great way to start a stream. I appreciate you. We we appreciate you. Everyone here at the Coding Garden appreciates you. Um, welcome to the show. <laughs> Uh, today we are going to be talking about Vue.js 3.0. Check out Vue Next on GitHub. This. So uh, Vue 3 was officially released um, a couple days ago. I forget which day, but it's it's out there. Vue 3.0 is out of release candidate. It's here. However, all of the related libraries are still technically in beta. So Vue Router is still in, uh, V4 is in beta, Vue X, V4 is in beta. Um, the DevTools extension is still a work in progress. Um, all of these uh, various plugins that you would need are also a work in progress. So the, the library itself is released and version 3 is out there, but it's going to take a little bit of time before everything else is up to speed. But the plan is today. We are going to build some apps with Vue 3. Um, yeah, that's the plan. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. Again, thank you to Revive Noon and all of the other people with the supports. There's a lot this morning. Um, Casper with that four month tier one resub. Thank you very much. Nookie Poo with the three month Twitch Prime resub. Uh, Shaye, or Sha Shaye, Shaye with the three month resub who says, woo, three months. Uh, Draper with the two month Twitch Prime resub. Revive Noon. With the, I can't point that far, 50, 50 gifted subs. <laughs> Thank you very much, Revive Newt. Um, and Timmy Connect with the three month tier one resub. Actually, did you send, did you send a message with your donation? I got, so I was, I was away from my computer for a second while all of this was getting started. And then I received an email that I got a PayPal donation. Um, <laughs> Did you send a message with that? I, I'll, let me check really quick because I don't I don't want to miss that message if you did send something. Whew. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everyone. Who's excited about Vue 3? No message, just a donation. Well, thank you very much, Revive Newt. You are too kind. Too kind. <laughs> um We can definitely get the get the newt roaming around on the screen. Let's get let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what's up, Battlefame? Uh, if you check out, oh, and actually anybody that's new here, if you check out the frequently asked questions right here, um, a lot of your questions are probably answered. Now, I don't want to dissuade you from talking in the chat and asking questions, um, but if you are interested in what happens here, <laughs> the frequently asked questions. Welp. <laughs> no, that was that. Uh, we went down for everybody. Uh, OBS suddenly dropped to uh, zero kilobytes a second. Uh, yeah, tell everyone to refresh. Refresh. I had to stop and start the stream. Well, that's unfortunate. We're trying. We're trying to make stuff happen here. <laughs> we're back. Um, smile in the chat when you can see me again. Excuse me. What were we doing before we were so rudely interrupted by issues? What were we doing? Oh, yeah. Somebody asked, is Vue easier than React? I would say uh, it, it depends on who you are and what your past experience is and, and what led you up to where you are in your life right now. But for the most part, yes, Vue is a lot easier than React. Uh, <laughs> welcome back, everyone. Uh, what were we going to do? Uh, okay. Um, let's, let's say thanks to all the people. We said thanks to the people. Thank you again to all the people. Smile. Yes, but that's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to smile. Oh yeah, Newt Overlay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, I waited. Um, let's get that going. Uh, hey, D. Hugh, with that resub. Thanks for being awesome. You bring so much positivity and inspiration. Well, thank you very much, D. Hugh. D. Hugh, thanks for being here. Um, I think we have a uh, no. That's a noob quest. 
Do we have a revive new direct? Yeah, we do have a revive new. Look, revive new. You have a directory on my computer. I guess that's a little hard to see. Let's let's bring that up a little bit. Like there. Um, cool. Newts. It's been a while since we started this up. Let's see if it still works. Um, uh, no. NPM run dev. I want. I would. I would think. Yeah. Look at that. I guessed it right. Well, thank you, Virtue. Thanks for hanging out. We're just getting started. Uh, we still have to say hello to everybody and all that good stuff. But right now, we are uh, about to have a newt on the screen for probably the rest of the stream. Um, uh, mainly to thank Revive Newt for all of the supports. The, the, the newt should... Where's the newt? Where's the... Oh, there's the newt. <laughs> Uh, that newt will just be wandering around. Where's the newt? <laughs> no, no, we we love doing it. Revive newt. We love doing it. Uh, I'll use. I'll definitely use your focus mode, Ingie Berman. Um, we'll use this in a second. We'll use this to talk about view three. But we're gonna we're gonna write some code today. We're gonna build some apps for sure. Uh, Tuzo, thank you for that hydrate. Cheers, everyone. Let's all take a sip of our beverage in a cup. And lied. Thank you for that posture check. And also the hydrate. Let's go with the um, slightly invisible. Well, not, not so much invisible. I changed my chroma key this morning because my lighting is a little bit off still. Yeah, I think we're going to do a view three. I, this is exactly what I was thinking, Mark. A view three abstravaganza. If you look on on my YouTubes, check out my... My, oh, it's, it's not YouTubes. It's just YouTube. I don't know why I typed YouTubes. But if you look at my YouTubes by typing YouTube, um, a long time ago, like over two years ago, we did a Vue.js abstravaganza. If you search for coding garden app extravaganza, there it is. The Vue.js abstravaganza was streamed two years ago. Uh, we built three apps. We built a score counter, we built a to-do app, and we built a Reddit clone. Um, all with Vue.js and all in about two hours. That's not possible these days because we get really distracted. Um, but it would be fun to at least do like a score counter in a to-do app with Vue 3 just to see what it's all about. Gifted subs! <laughs> I don't know why I didn't see the... Did anyone hear the notification sound? I didn't hear it. Um, but uh, DZM, thank you for those... Was it five gifted? Yeah, thank you very much. Oh... I appreciate you. I, I feel like I just saw Code Phobia. Where, where did I see Code Phobia? Did Code Phobia get gifted? No, Code Phobia said, I obviously need a YouTube's alias. You're, you're not wrong. Let's uh, let's do it. Uh, actually, one of the mods, can you handle that? I'm um, I'm a little overwhelmed. We're getting we're getting a lot of supports today. Did I miss anything else? No, but thank you, thank you, DZM. Um, <laughs> thank you for that hydrate light. All right, let's acknowledge these follows, and then uh, we'll say hello to everybody, and then write some code. Talk about Vue.js. Uh, Icon Pratik, thank you very much for that follow. Uh, Daddy Fox, what's up? Codigo, thanks for being here. And motivation to study in uh, Schlickertons and Reverb and Virtue and Matterm and Mish and Beehive and Moles. Thank you all for those follows. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Confleis. Uh, Confly. Thank you for that follow as well. Um, yes, let's say hi to everybody. If you say these words, uh, well, uh, Bogahe is an option. If you are a Kit Boga subscriber, um, or also the first one, uh, this is fine. And uh, Vicus with the posture check, thank you very much. Um, stand up straight, everyone. I'm late. Uh, I mean, <laughs> right? late is relative. We're still we still haven't said hello. But if you say hi, hello, hey, morning, afternoon, evening, howdy, good day, good day, coding hiyo, vo hiyo, um, or boga hey. Um, uh, if you write a message that matches this regular expression, so we have a word boundary followed by a matching group with uh, a bunch of ors, many different options, uh, and then another word boundary. If you say any message that matches this regular expression, um, your uh, message will be filtered and I will be able to see it. Let's go back in time to 43 minutes ago <laughs> to uh, FV. FV with the first hello. Congrats. Uh, I'm going to set a five minute timer. Uh, just because, sadly, I have a stand-up in about 45 minutes. Um, but 
I'm ac- I'm not going to stop the stream. I'm going to take a break. And hopefully that stand up doesn't last more than 10 minutes. But I am going to have to take a break in about 45 minutes. Um, so quick hello speed run. Here we go. Uh, what's up, FV and the she boss? And Mark and Lou and Tuzo and DevM and Awaited and Feistrand and Doc. What's up, Doc? And Tusix and Mitzik and uh, Sarvange and Coding Pasta. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you, Coding Pasta. It's also very possible that there are just so many messages that I don't see your messages. But, but thank you for being here. What's up? Hello, Adrian Engineer, Mr. Demon Wolf. Uh, check out Mr. Demon Wolf. They're a member of our live coders team. Also, check out Alka, who I think is sleeping right now, but his bot is here. Um, yes, sir. How's it going? What's up? 1320 day and Isla and Shines Love and Mod and uh, Mania Mutt and Marasha and Tito and Richard Me. How you doing? Phoenix Rising. Thank you very much for that uh, four month Twitch Prime resub. Four month. Four months. It's a long time. Uh, Fluffy Horse Lips. Thank hello. What's up, Jai and uh, Sharon Cherry and DZM and NG Berman who says, Yes, boys, we're doing View 3. And, and girls. And every, anyone that doesn't go by boy or girl. Uh, we're doing view three. Yes, we are. What's up, Foggy Bits? And Blue Monster and uh, Mr. Balrog with a Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much, Mr. Balrog. Um, Two Fox and Blue Monster. I think, it's a, did I say Blue Monster? I don't know. What's up, Blue Monster and Two Fox? And uh, Alpatron and Don and Ice Cream Tango with all the Coding Garden emotes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, what's up, Danielle and Dario, who says, You taught me the beauty of emojis. Some people don't like emojis. I like emojis. What's up, Paul Ricky? And Limeotes and Notorious FM Music. And Aknot Now, how's it going? Hello, can fly. New to Twitch, hope to learn. Well, welcome. Welcome to Twitch. You have arrived. What's up, uh, Rady the Brand? <laughs> Looking forward to this. I hope, I hope it lives up to your anticipation, I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna take a drink. Um, Barawal, how's it going? Hello, uh, Nassage. And Overdose of Sadness and Sniddle and Greg. Good morning. What's up? What's up, Lamau from the Dominican Republic? Very good. Hello, Nookie Poo. And Dihu says good morning. Hello, Depo Palm. And uh, Theo Calisthenics. You can finally see me live. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, what's up, Luciano, who says hello, everyone in chat. Greetings from Argentina. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Kuzi. What's up, Orange Toy Guns? Toy Guns. Okay, hey. Welcome to the show. What's up, Jeff? Uh, yeah, Revive New is definitely on fire. Uh, but what's up, Greeny? How's it going? Hello, Slake. And uh, Jorge Stamatillo. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, Sky, uh, how's it going? My day's been pretty good. What's up, Lied and Coding60 Plus and GM Awesome? Hope you guys have a good day or afternoon. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And Nguyen, hello. Hello, hello. What's up, uh, Telesky? And uh, Vicus, who says, started learning Vue a day ago. Well, I would say you probably still would stick with Vue 2, because, like I mentioned, a lot of the libraries associated with Vue 3 are um still in beta but angelique loves jazz <laughs> i like jazz too uh thank you for that twitch prime sub very much appreciated um danger mouse how's it going what's up Dayu? and jack just started my course for computer science and we're doing computer systems ah cannot wait to start using arduinos nice yeah arduinos are fun uh what's up makin and cash fure and the original cm chris jones welcome 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 hello mana and rk cell and said le pinguin and Yukarai and Virtue and Unfair and Battle Fame from Pakistan. Very cool. And Julian. Hello, hello. What's up, Blue Finks? And The Fool and Gavin and Jay Getachu and uh, Nguyen Yellow Robot. I started following you because of videos of you. Well, thank you. I like Vue. It's one of my favorite things. Um, is it my favorite JavaScript related thing? It might. It just might be. I really like Vue. I write React on a daily basis and professionally. Um, professionally people pay me money to write react code um, but i really like you uh what's up froggets franz and uh nisu nemer yeah uh can we get some hearts in the chat for all those I, I i i don't know what else to do we can we can say thank you we can give hearts uh but anybody that got gifted you 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 better think revive new you better or we'll come after you <laughs> um we won't come after you don't don't go after the people that are not thinking Revi- Thank you, Revive Newt. I appreciate you. What's up, Karan and Sightseer and Eugene, uh, Eugene Zom and the Oxty and I'm Tom Eddy and uh, the Console Garden. Oh, <laughs> uh, very cool name. I like your logo too, TCGMG. What's up, Hibas and uh, Lethal Game Addict and Zanzen. Hello from Oz. Love your streams. Well, thank you very, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. What's up, Bilza and Jorge Pasco. 
the five month resub who says hey cj um hello welcome welcome uh what's up thight and mark and bath bomb and sinas and thomas parsley and we're out of time but i think i can do a speed run i can do a speed run what's up uh pritmashik and dev terp and moles and betta and load and jordan and frozen spray and terazoid and mr balrog and percy down and hector and nobby and hokey and foon and ronald and drunk time lord and dj mcmuffin and mr daniel f and olaf good morning hello german and the mixu and angelique loves jazz and stylin and fset and loco dev and kelvetica and call me and d carts and t coser and revive newt uh yeah i'm glad you caught the stream too and Infi. And part time ninja and Greep Eye Killer and Dobbs and Tariq and uh, Snapshot and Mongol uh, Deef and Vuthan and Bjorn the Dev and this code rocks and Varun and David Snyder and Jim McDonald and Siba and Rainy by Sun and Pavan and Octave Keys and Procrastinator Mastermind and Zombies Pale um, and John W. George and uh, 8X13B and Cirelli. Cirelli, Cirelli, what's up, Archer Look? And uh, Los Dia Blas Talmuerte. I'm a fresh new subscriber. Well, welcome. YouTube subscriber, <laughs> hello Krapos, and Jukata Pro, and Jamuth, and Razor Sun, and Alberta. Good morning, Murdoch. What's up, Granite? And links. That's everyone. If I did not say your name, uh, you can say <laughs> hi right now. I'll acknowledge you. Uh, but welcome to the show. This is what we like. How this is how we like to start the show. We like to invite and uh, welcome everybody in. Uh, what's up, Brandon uh, Arsenault? And um, you know, just uh, make sure everybody feels welcome. Hello, Artis, and Fab, and Dev Henrique, and Martin uh, Munilla. Um, there was a question I saw while I was scrolling. Uh, somebody asked if you're new, they were new here. They're like, what do you do? We mainly do JavaScript. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Vue.js, which is a uh, front end JavaScript framework. Uh, they recently released version 3.0. And so we're going to show the latest features and we're going to we're going to build some apps with that basic front end apps like to do apps and a score counter and stuff like that. Uh, what's up, Scrimpy Scare and uh, Agorn and Infinitum and X uh, Z Dual Films and Computer Chip Dip. Um, but here on the Coding Garden, we uh, we build apps, we answer questions, we hang out, we just talk about code. Code is fun. I like code. You all probably like code, too. So we, we do code. Um, all right. That's all the hellos. I'll tell you really quick how all this stuff on my screen works after we acknowledge the follows. <laughs> uh, Bottom Energy, uh, thank you for that follow, and Uznib, and uh, Jupiter, and Zombie Spell, and The Break, and Los Dia Blos Tal Muerte, thank you for the follow, and Yodi, and Dipe, and Emarir, thank you all for those follows. Um, chat's going crazy today. <laughs> MP Dealer, thank you for that three month resub. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Uh, what's up, Funk? And I, somebody said something. I mean, a lot of people said a lot of things. How to get paid with coding? I mean, I uh, I went the traditional route. I got a computer science degree, and then I did several internships, and then I got a job. And at that point, uh, I had experience, so it was fairly easy for me to find another job if I wanted one because um, I was an experienced developer, and those are kind of hard to come by these days um but you could uh i i'm not familiar with i haven't done freelancing i work for a software consultancy it's like freelancing with padding i have i have a sales team i have uh, a project manager i have a, a people that handle all the other stuff and i get to i get to write code and do architecture and stuff like that can we name the newt oh, it's revive newt that's its name its name is revive newt um i think i missed quite a few hellos but that's okay uh, any chance you'll use ADBS recognition with one of your future live streams? Possibly. I've, I've seen this before. Um, they have like an image recognition API, if that's the one that you're talking about. Can I please build something with a back end? <laughs> Maybe not this morning, because we're going to focus on Vue 3. I don't I don't want to have to spin up a back end. Though we could spin up a, a Feathers J. I, uh, hold on to that idea. Here, we're going to put this in the parking lot. Because uh, I've done a meetup talk before where I built... Uh, reusable functions using the composition API, which is new in Vue 3, uh, for a Feathers.js client. So instead of using um, uh, Feathers Vue X or anything like that, I created my own little bitty reusable library that allowed me to talk to Feather services and listen for real-time updates. So maybe. We're going to park that. It's in the parking lot. We'll do that. Can we use TypeScript? Also, I'm not opposed to that because uh, Vue 3, one of the big new things with Vue 3 is that it was rewritten from the ground up in TypeScript, and you can use TypeScript. There's first-class support for TypeScript, so yeah, well, why not? We'll probably use TypeScript. <laughs> we are bots. Um, oh, you're fasting today. Well, good luck, and um, 
Yeah, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> All right. I probably missed a bunch of things. It's not a culinary show. No. I mean, we've talked about cooking before. Um, We've talked about it, but my kitchen is very messy. I don't think you'd want to see that. And what's up, Noel? Referents? <laughs> Is this how you spell reference in some other language? Reference? How's it going? Uh, had a video for searching filtered arrays. Hmm. I'm not sure. I don't know, Sledge Dog. Um, if somebody's familiar, feel free to link my YouTube video. What's up, Danny Lauren? Uh, that beanie looks sharp. Oh, thank you. I messed around with my blue screen this morning because the chroma key was a little bit off. I don't know. Do you think your love for Vue would start to, to deplete if you worked with it professionally like with React? Probably not, because I've worked with Vue professionally, I mean, for the most part. It was kind of like side projects, but they were still related to the job that I was doing. Vue is just objectively better. We're not We're not going to... This is... Uh, Vue 3 is is in the limelight today. We're not going to compare it to, to React for the most part. We're just going to use it and show you how awesome it is. Um, but you can look at past... We, we've, we've talked about this in depth before. Um, so if you look at the frequently asked questions, and then you go to my tech preferences... Uh, there is a frequently asked question, which is, why do you prefer Vue.js? And thank you, uh, Dr. De Demented? Dr. Amented? Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. But uh, there's links to two past live streams here where, uh, one, uh, I introduce you to Vue.js if you are a React developer. So everything, I keep relating it back to React. And then there's another one where someone asked the question, why would you choose Vue over like something like React or Angular? So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I am asking you to go watch a past stream because today uh, we don't care about that. View three is the thing. We're not going to compare it to anything else. We're just going to use it. We're going to do the thing. We're going to do it. Um, yeah. All right. Let's get into it. I'm ready. How long do I usually stream for? Um, maybe two hours. I think the mini newt is broken. It keeps walking in a circle. <laughs> you know what? Let's just refresh the page because it might have started off with like a really weird random. Um, uh... Yeah, there we go. That seems like it's a good starting point. Um, all right, my day is good. Let's write some code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're talking about Vue.js 3.0. Uh, now, for anybody that's new to any of this, I will give you a quick introduction. Like, what is this thing? What is it used for? Yeah, we have two focus modes. So thanks for that uh, quick reminder. Uh, we're going to use a focus mode to talk about uh, what is Vue, when and why would you use it, and then we'll dive into Vue 3 and build an app. But yeah, NG Berman and Jim McDonald with those focuses. And uh, thank you, uh, Bratloff, with that hydrate. Cheers. There we go. Let's do it. Um, 16 minutes of focus to talk about view. And hello, Zayad. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Um, can you learn view without knowing React? Absolutely. They're, they are mutually exclusive. Um, if you know React, it, it might make things easier because the concepts are similar. Um, now, I'm I'm thinking, maybe should we put the chat in emote only mode? Should we? Jance one eighty two, thank you very much for that resub. Uh, who says where can I get a coffee mug like that? Well, my friend, uh, on the internet. <laughs> Uh, I designed this all by myself using, I mean, it's literally just the future of bold font. But uh, if you uh, go here, uh, that link I just shared in the chat, uh, I'll share it again. Here. You go there. You can find this shirt. You can find this mug. <laughs> all that good stuff. Here's the mug. It is, that's, that's an expensive mug. You could probably design and print your own that looks exactly the same for less. But uh, that's up to you. All right, we're 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 getting distracted. Let's talk about Vue now. Right now, if you go to the Vue.js website, uh, it, this is still technically the documentation for Vue.js two, which is the older version. It's still completely relevant. A lot of people still use it. Um, but Vue three is the is the new hotness. There are some changes. But if you go directly to the documentation, you're going to get the Vue two docs, which is a little bit different. And so um, what I want to take you through is the Vue 3 docs. But first, I'll tell you what Vue is. It's, they call themselves the Progressive JavaScript Framework. It is, it is a thing that allows you to build interactive websites. Um, it is comparable with something like React or something like Angular or something like Svelte or Ember. These are all in the, in the same category. Some of them do more things than others. But for the most part, this is for building front-end websites. Um, 
One thing I like about Vue is that it is approachable. So they let you use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They sprinkle a few directives into the HTML to make things interactive, and you use handlebars. But for the most part, if you know HTML and CSS and JavaScript, you can write Vue apps. Um, and hey, Bob's Paradox, thank you for that resub. Whee! OK, um, it's very versatile. So. Uh, what I like about Vue is you can build very small apps with it. It doesn't have to be super complex. You could build things that don't have a router, that don't have global state, that are just like a single component that does all the things you need to do. You can do that. Or you can build large scale applications as well. Um, I'll say this if you're, I mean, this is one comparison I'll make is um, if, <laughs> well, I'll say that any app that you have built with React, you can build with Vue.js st straight up. There's not a thing you can do in React that you can't do in Vue, um, similar to like an Angular app or anything like that. But if there are smaller, simpler applications, I I posit that it's actually simpler to get up and going with Vue than it is something like like React. And I got some weird green screen stuff happening up there. I think we'll leave it. It's fine. Uh, it's also very performant. So uh, it has a virtual DOM implementation just like React, um, but it is potentially faster. And especially with Vue 3, they have done a ton of performance imp improvements. And also it's tiny. It's a teeny tiny library. All right. Um, now, if we look, we're, we're gonna, actually, I think the, what we're going to do today is look at the migration guide because this talks about if you knew Vue 2, how would you go and start building Vue 3 apps with that knowledge? Um, let's go ahead and set up an app. So we need to, um, you have two options. You can use Vite, which is, uh, let's, let's take a moment to talk about our friend Vite or Vite, Vite. Um, this is a very cool build build tool, and the reason it's cool is because it's extremely fast. It uses so uh, if you take a look at can I use, and you look at uh, modules or imports um, uh, JavaScript modules. Devergreen, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate you. Um, but uh, JavaScript modules via the script tag. So you may not know this, but it is, it is actually possible to do imports and exports directly inside of the web browser. You don't need a build process. You don't need something like uh, Webpack or, or Browserify. You can you can write code that does those kinds of things directly in the browser. And the nice thing about Vite or Vite, what should I call this? I'm going to call it Vite. I'm going to call it Vite. I like, I'm going to call it Vite. Vite. Um, and the nice thing about it is that it doesn't try to do anything extra. If the browser supports it, it uses that, which makes it extremely fast. It has hot reloading, all this interesting stuff. So Vite, Vite seems really cool. They have a bunch of built-in stuff, but we're actually going to use the Vue CLI because the Vue CLI is also very cool. So let's install the latest version of the CLI. I believe version 4.5 uh, is the one that supports Vue 3. Let's go up here. And uh, Mr. Daniel F., thank you very much for that Twitch Prime resub, who says... Here we go again. Here we go again. Uh, let's make a directory for a view, view three abstravaganza. Like that. Uh, I'm gonna install the view CLI globally. You don't have to do this. You could use MPX and do it all in one go. But um, I like to have it globally. It makes my, uh, it, it spins things up faster. And Leon Latch, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub as well. I guess we did go into emote only mode. Feels a little weird. Well, that's okay. <laughs> we'll wait for this to finish installing. Um, and I'll talk about really quick, the, one of the most notable features of Vue.js 3 is the composition API. Um, and basically, what this allows you to do is... Uh, uh, here. Um, sort of, not even that. I want to see... I'll show you an example. I'll show you an example. Um, but basically, what it allows you to do is... Um, Instead of having your options object like you did in Vue 2, where you would have a property for, <laughs> here's a message, thank you, CodePhobia. Um, uh, you would have a property for your uh, computed properties, you'd have a property for your lifecycle methods, you'd have a property for your methods. So uh, Vue 2 is very like options based. Uh, the composition API allows you to create composable functions that can be reused um, in your components. Uh, and it's very similar, similar to React hooks. Um, it's objectively better and less confusing, and I'll show you why. <laughs> so we installed the Vue CLI globally, and now we can do this view create. Um, and let's let's create a score counter. So let's do this. I'm gonna go to my GitHub repo for the view extravaganza and uh, Trout Soda. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Um, but let's look at the view extravaganza that I did a long time ago. This is a very long time ago. Here it is. 
August. Well, the last commit was August 2019, but I feel like I, yeah, three years ago. It's really old. But let's recreate this score counter. Now, this score counter um, was extremely basic. Like, if I think we look, we, we put our, no. If we look at our app, I think that's where we put all of the code. Yes. All right, let's, this, this is an example of a view to application. So we define our data. We have uh, two properties on our data. We have player one and we have player two. Each of those has a score. Um, we have a method to increase the score for a specific player, and we have a method to decrease the score for a specific player. You pass in the player and it modifies the score property. Uh, and then in our template, um, we're showing player one, player two. Uh, well, let, let's build a very similar example, but with uh, view three. So let's do view, uh, create, um, score counter. It's going to be super simple. It's going to be so basic, but we're still going to use the CLI. Uh, I want to choose a uh, view three preview. That's going to give me a view app that, um, I think by default, it just has Babel linting. Uh, I don't think the CLI supports setting it up with the router and view X just yet. If we want that, I think we'll have to set it up manually. Um, because like I mentioned earlier, those are still in beta. We're on the bleeding edge right now. We're on the bleeding edge. That's okay. Um, all right. Now, I also want to show you this, the single file component composition API syntax sugar. Now, this is awesome. I really like it. So if you've ever used Svelte, they allow you to create a script tag. You can add all of your variables and then you can just, you can just, actually, you don't even need, do you need a script tag? Maybe you need a script tag, but you, you put all of your code at the top level. This is how things are possible in Vue 3. You create your template, you create a script tag, and you put that word setup on it, and then you can just put your code right inside of it. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. So this, this is actually what we're going to do. Uh, let's go, oh, did I not put it in the right directory? Oh, well, we'll put it here. That's fine for now. Open up VS Code and uh, get to coding. So if we take a look, uh, one of the major changes is the way you create your view app. Um, it used to be that you create a, an instance of a view app, but now you, you call this create app function, which is a little bit different, and you pass in the component you want. Um, so that's one breaking change. It's not a major change. You can just swap that code out. Um, let's take a look at our first component. This is the app component, which pulls in a hello world component. Let's start this thing up. Uh, npm run serve, I think. There we go. Got a view app listening here. Look, it's our view app. Let's rip everything out and start from scratch. So we're just going to start with a basic template that has an H1 that says, hello world. Um, we're going to pull out all the basic styles. We are going to um, not do anything. Basically, we're going to have an empty script tag. Um, and we're going to delete that hello world component from the components directory. All right, does it work? Awesome. So we have a view app that just says "Hello World." Now, um, let's try to build this this score counter app. Um, so we let's have a let's have a div. This is going to be our, our top level element. Um, we'll have another another div that basically lists information about a player. So let's do like uh, an H two that says uh, player one, and then right below that we'll have their score. So let's just put uh, I don't know a paragraph tag with their current score, which is zero. So we should see something like that. Great. Let's just add some basic styles. So the cool thing about Vue is all of your all of your stuff is in a um, uh, a file called dot view, and you have your template, your script, and your style for that one component. Yeah, Envy uh, makes an interesting point. You don't need a top level element anymore. It's very possible that we don't. Let's try it. Let's see if it yells at us if we do this. Um, so. It's very similar in React is typically your component, like your render function needs one top level element, uh, if not like a fragment or something like that. But does th is, does this work? Hey, hey, no errors, no errors. That's great. Thanks for the, thanks for the, the call out in fee. So, uh, hey, GNS182 with that $20 uh, donation. It feels good to have internet again. I'm glad you have internet. Thank you for your, thank you for your tip. I appreciate you. But that's a cool feature of Vue 3 is you don't need a top level element anymore. You can just have two things that are at the top level, which is fine. Um, okay. 
Uh, let's get some styles going really quick. Um, actually, I do. I do want a container. Are they in a container? Let's see how this is rendered. I think they're rendered into an element called uh, app, so we can style that. Yeah. So div id app, and then you can see the the two divs in there like that. Okay. So. Uh, right now, these styles are just global styles. Um, if we wanted them to be specific to the component, we could just do that. Um, there's some new things introdu introduced in Vue 3 that al allow you to use like CSS variables. We don't care about that. Global styles app. Uh, we'll do font family is uh, sans serif. Font size, blow it way up like three rims. And uh, text align center. Just want some. That's, this is what we want. It's, it's easy enough. So um, we have a page. We have two places with a score. We have player one score and player two score. Uh, let's make it interactive. Um, and we, we probably want a button that's something like increase score. And maybe another button that's like decrease score. Something like this. Um, I'm I'm purposefully duplicating the code. Like this is a perfect scenario to create a component, but this is a simple app. Yeah, I think this this is fine. This is fine, and I'm actually just going to get rid of the word score because we know in the context what this thing is trying to do. So we have increase and we have decrease. Awesome. So if I click this, the number should go up. No, no, no. opposite. Let's swap. Let's, let's 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 swap these two. Let's put decrease before increase. Um, Okay, so if I click this, it should go down. If I click this, it should go up. So now we need some sort of state um, because right here we just have hard-coded the number zero. We want that to be represented in our component somehow, and we're going to do that right in the script. Um, now, the old way was to have a data property, and Howard, thank you for that three-month resub. We'll see what your message was. Um, here, more to come. Salamat Pagi. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, but yeah, we need some data. And now I'm going to show you this really cool thing uh, that I like about Vue 3. And it says it's experimental right now, but I, I, this is the way of the future. This is how people are going to be writing Vue components. So you put the word setup on the script tag. And then uh, any uh, variable that you uh, export is accessible inside of your template. So let's say I want to uh, have a variable that is the player one score. So let's just say uh, let player... Actually, we'll have player one is equal to an object. And that object has a score property inside of it that is like, starts off as one, like this. Now, if I, I believe if I say export player one, will this work? I don't know. I'll have, I'll have to go look at the docs. But basically, if you export a variable here, it becomes available inside of your template. It could be that I need to install the latest version of VTUR because it, 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 let's see if, do we even get a compile error? Does this work? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at the docs. This could totally break everything. Yeah, this, this is broken. Uh, let's let's look at the docs to see how to do it. So, export const. Um, I guess that makes sense. Now we've exported const. It didn't break. Now, uh, because we've exported this, let's say I want to show that score property right here. We can use handlebars. We should be able to. And I should be able to do uh, player one dot score like that. It should say one. And it does. Look at that. It's amazing. <laughs> this is fantastic. So uh, basically anything you export from this script becomes available inside of your template. Um, great. Now, uh, right now, this is just a regular plain old JavaScript object, right? So uh, we want to be able to click these buttons to change that value. And to do that, we need a ref. We need a, we need a reactive value that knows to listen for changes. Uh, let's take a quick stretch. Quick stretch. That was basically first try. Second try. Um, so we can't just export a bare object like this. Uh, we need a reactive value. And this is one of the new things that was introduced in um, uh, view three. So you import this thing called ref. And what that allows you to do is create a reactive value. And this is very similar, very similar to like use state and react. Um, However, it's it's better <laughs> in, in every possible way. It's better. So we import ref. Um, and then I could do something like um, export const something. And then I pass in the initial value for that ref. So um, 
I mean, actually, so not only you, you, there is ref, but we also get access, I believe, to uh, there's like state. What's the other one we get access to? I need to look at the composition API. Uh, so there's ref. Does anybody know what the other one is? React is it reactive? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's call. It, let's just, let's try it. <laughs> let's let's try it. So uh, ref is a simple state wrapper. So that could, that's for like very simple values. Reactive is if you want to basically create an object that has multiple properties where all of those properties are reactive. Um, so we'll use reactive. And actually, I don't know, Ricky. So Ricky is asking: Is will the view CLI be replaced by Vite? I don't know. The view CLI is awesome. It's it's like there's things I haven't shown you about it in terms of the uh, like the the plugin ecosystem and stuff like that. So I think they might coexist. I actually don't know. I don't know. But let's try it with reactive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap uh, we're gonna wrap this object in a call to reactive like this. And what that does is it allows us to now modify any of the properties inside of player one and uh, once we modify them those will be reflected here so let's let's make sure this still works so all we did was we took that object and we wrapped it in reactive um we're gonna wrap who's wrapping wait what <laughs> um and the app isn't broken so that's great but now let's say we want to increase it uh and um i mean Technically, we can just do it in line. Let's just do it in line, and then we'll, we'll write some functions. But now that that is a reactive object, right here on this decrease button, I should be able to say, um, when uh, you click this button, let's just say player one dot score minus minus, just like that. It's ugly. I know. In the real world, you probably wouldn't throw this logic directly in the template. You would want this to be wrapped in sort of some in some sort of function. But this should work. So when we click this button. Make it go down. We click this button. Make it go up. There we go. Done. Done. Look at that score. I got a really high score. We're going to go all the way to 42. There we go. Good job, everyone. Um, now, obviously, uh, you could you could actually export functions. So uh, let's let's do this. Uh, we'll export a ship it. <laughs> um, now. <clears throat> I mean, we, so here's the thing. If we want to get this other one working, all we have to do is copy paste the code, right? We could, we could, we could do this. I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through the steps. I'm not actually going to do it. I think we're going to create a separate component. Um, we could create a player two object, right? And then we could copy and paste this and replace everything with player two, right? <clears throat> this is how we code, copy paste coding. Um, player two. All right. And if I did everything right, it should work now. Look at that. We have a player two. It's independent of player one. Great. Now, the better way to solve this is with a component, right? Because this is absolutely duplicate logic. Um, let's extract it to a component. Um, a com what we're working on right now, yeah, copy paste. What we're working on right now technically is a component. It has a template. It has a setup. It has a style. Um, but we can create a component called like score counter. Let's do that. <clears throat> score counter dot view. <clears throat> um, and uh, we'll set things up. So basically, we'll take we'll take this part, which is the template. We'll put that right here. Um, we'll take the part, uh, basically this, which is just the player info, and we'll put that right here. And instead of calling it player one, we'll just call it player. Um, and then we could have a prop that is the player name. Something like this. Player name. Um, and so if we want to be able to mix in stuff, <laughs> no, so uh, I didn't talk about this, but the composition API is a way of uh, replacing mix ins, basically, because you can create reusable functions. We haven't gotten into reusable functions yet. But uh, now I want to be able to pass the name down to this component so that way we can show a custom name. Um, let's take a look at how we would do props. Like if we look back at this, I believe get access to props. Declaring props. Okay, so setup equals 
One problem with the script setup. I get, yeah, we could do player.name. Let's just do that, Nguyen. <laughs> but, but no, but then we couldn't pass, we couldn't pass down the name. Uh, because then we would need like a score property. Uh, let's figure out how to do props. Um, one problem with script setup is that it removes the ability to declare other component options, for example, props. We can solve this by treating the default export as an additional option. This also aligns with the normal script. So uh, if we say setup equals props, we export an object, inherit attributes false. Oh, okay, so we have the, yeah, 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 should work. So the default export, the default export can have our, our prop stuff. Okay, so, um, setup equals props. We'll do a default export and we'll say name is a string, just like that. And so if you're, if you're new to imports exports, you, you probably want to learn about that first, but a default export means if I import a thing without trying to grab a named import, I'm going to get the default export. Whereas if I, uh, import it by name, I can get a specific named thing. Uh, though we don't even have to touch the imports and exports. That's all handled under the hood. So I'm saying I'm do, I've declared a prop called name and now I wanna pass that name down and, and show it right there. Um, though, how do I reference it? Oh, wait, do I just magically get a props variable? I don't like that. They need. They might need to figure out a better way to do that. <laughs> I think I just magically get, magically get a props variable. Um, so could I do like export const uh, name equals props.name? Is that what I got to do? I don't like that. So this exposes it to the template. Let's see if this works. Uh, inherit attributes. I don't know. So I, I will, uh, I do, I think I do have setup equals props right here. Yeah, I have it there. Okay. Um... It doesn't tell me what that does. It's fine. Uh, let's get this working. So what I want is I want to use this score counter inside of app.view. So now, instead of all of this, I basically want to be able to say, I want an instance of the score counter and the name is player one, like that. So that's how I can use it. And now um, I don't need um, any of these things. Now, I, I do need to tell this component about that component. Yeah, I think it's something like scope slots. When you do setup equals things, it um, it adds the property. Um, oh, this is, v, this is V2, though. This is not V3. Thank you for the link, though, Ally Post. Okay, so... Here's how we would do it in view two, and I think this will probably work. So this thing still exports uh, an object, and then we can say the components that you have access to are that, and then we just need to import this. So I um, import score counter from uh, components slash score counter, like that. So this actually imports that file, and then we make it available on the component by putting it on the components property. And that allows us to do this inside of our template. Uh, does that work? Um, props is not defined. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> I guess I guess, I guess this actually would be, need to be a computed property because it comes from props. I don't like that. I, don't, I do not like that at all, but let's, let's see. Um, is not defined. <sighs> Declare a const props? No way. Oh, well, thank you, Revive Nate. We'll see you later. Uh, yeah, I guess, does computed get access to props? Yeah, so, okay, so here's the thing. We're using the syntactic sugar for setup, which means that we can just add that attribute there, but typically... Typically, you have a function called setup. We, we might just need to do that. We might just need to do that. So uh, I don't want to confuse you, but this is one way of doing it, which I really liked. But the other way to do it is to um, export um, 
a object that has a function called setup, and then all of your code goes inside of setup. And then instead of exporting, you actually just return a thing. So we can de we can declare player inside of setup like this. And then from setup, whatever you return, that becomes available inside the template. So if you return an object and it has player inside of there, then we should get access to it. And then uh, also we should get access to the, what is this called? Is this like options? I think this has a, a props variable on it. But um, basically, this is this is the way of doing it without that other syntax thing. But let's see what's on what's on options. Um, we should get an error because name isn't on there. But this is a proxy that has oh, it's props and then options. So if we look at it, um, I don't know. I should just look at the docs. But let's say it's props. These are props. <laughs> And then the object that we return needs to have name, and we'll do props.name like this. First param is props, I believe it. Why is this complaining? Duplicate key name. Disagree. <laughs> I, dis I disagree. <laughs> um, why does this just say duplicate key? Uh, it's fine. Um, can I not call a prop name? Objection. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll show in the uh, in the um, the composition API docs really quick. Uh, this this one. If we look at props. So we can define our props. That's great. Um, oh no no, that's the view three guide. We need the composition API. I have a props object with a name above. Uh, yes, but th this is separate. So. I'm exporting this object. Uh, this object has a property called props. So this defines what props I'll accept in. And then setup is a function which returns an object. Um, I mean, I could just put the props on there like this. And then inside of here, I would need to do props.name like that. Um, that works. I don't like it though. I don't like it. <laughs> Um, because then we have to like clarify it. We could say like player name, and that's props dot name, and then inside of here, um, this becomes player name, like that, and that should work too. But the the nice thing about that is now that now that we figured this out, it, it shouldn't have been that hard, but we figured it out. Now we can create as many players as we want. We have player two. Uh, we could have player three. And now, because we have that reusable component, they're they're all independent, and they can all have a different name. So we can make this uh, Bob. We can make this Jim. We can make this uh, um, who else? Carol. That's Carol. <laughs> and now, um, let's see. Did it save? Refresh. There we go. So we have Bob, Jim, and Carol. <laughs> My name. <laughs> Um, so that works. Okay. You can just use name if it's part of the props above. So that's very interesting to me that it does not like the fact that this returns an object that has a name property. That maybe that's a caveat of the setup function that I don't know about. Um, okay. So this is composition API. See if there's anything about name. There's not. I don't know. Where's Karen though? <laughs> uh, props are automatically added to data, so you don't can't have a prop in data with the. Oh, is that well? So I don't know if it works the same way with setup. I don't think it does because setup. Uh, whatever is returned here, that's the only thing available inside of the template, right? So I don't think I can just do name right here, right? Right. Wait, what? Does that work? The template already has access to the props? I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> um, so that's, yeah, bamboozled, bamboozled. So that's basically what happened, magic. So <laughs> we can return properties here, but also whatever is on props we technically have access to. Well, 
A. That's a whole lot easier, which also means that um, we can... Okay. Okay, okay. So we have this. Let's go back to the other other way of doing it. And then I have to, I have to go take a quick break. Um, so we have our player. Like that. We have our props, which say name is a string. And then we put setup on here. Actually, we don't need access to props. So now that we have props, will this just work? I don't trust it. Let's restart the server. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, it works. Okay. Apparently, we had to do nothing <laughs> to get it working earlier. I was just very concerned about that. Uh, is there any difference from the op uh, options versus composition API or just a style choice? Um, with, I believe with the composition API, uh, it's potentially easier for Webpack and the module bundler to... Um, do tree shaking and only include the things that are needed. Um, I may there may be some slight differences to that though, but yeah. Can you show how I assign the name value? Yeah, so these are props. So basically, we're creating an instance of the counter. We're passing down a prop that is um, the uh, what the name should be, and then inside of here we magically get access to name, which. A lot of me and a lot of people in the chat say we don't like we don't like that this is just magically available, uh, which I guess I mean in view two it's magically available too, isn't it? I don't know. It's been a while. I have to take a quick break. Um, I will leave you with some music, <laughs> and uh, when we come back, uh, we're gonna build more apps. So we'll build a to do app using the composition API, and then we'll try to build a Reddit clone as well. We'll that we'll actually talk to the Reddit API when we do that. And thank you. I'll try to have the best stand-up that I can. Uh, be nice to everyone. I'll be back in hopefully less than 15 minutes. Um, uh, see you soon. I, I know you can still, still, still hear me. Uh, I need to get the music going and all that stuff. Literally. Literally. <laughs> uh, some hard plays. We're actually, um, we're like on time today. We're getting things done sort sort of sort of getting things done all right talk to you soon
Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, I'm back early. <laughs> stand up was actually the length of a stand up should be, which is good. Um, welcome back. And uh, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I realized earlier we were so quick to get started that I forgot to explain all the things on my screen uh, to all the people that are new here. Um, first time early? I guess so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, came in so no, I, can't, I don't. So here's the thing. If I just start my mic immediately, anybody that wasn't paying attention, it's going to freak them out. So um, which is why I did that slowly. Uh, what edits do I make to the archive streams? I don't. Um, I just edit out the first 13 minutes of waiting. That's about it. <laughs> Every now and then I'll do a clip, which is maybe like a 10 or 20 or 30 minute excerpt from a live stream, but I don't do any extra uh, edits. Um, okay. If you're new here, can I just get a smile in the chat? Just smile. I'll say hi to you. <laughs> Thank you, Dario. <laughs> And what's up, Function Jarvis and Halo? Um, there might have been some people we didn't say hi to earlier. Welcome. What's up, Lars and Nubin? Cypher. Oh, Effie is crying. No, Effie. <laughs> uh, Ricky says, Maximilian just launched his V3 course, and it's free for those who purchase the V2. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate you, Ricky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm just live. I'm, we're, we're doing it live. We're figuring it out live. This is absolutely not like a structured tutorial. As you can see, the title is Exploring. I do have some experience with the composition API, but yeah. Hello, hello, all you, all you smilers. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Every day I'm born anew. <laughs> oh, okay. I see Effie. Um, all right. Um, first of all, you can play the drop game. I can't believe I didn't, I didn't tell you all about this earlier. It totally slipped my mind. But if you do exclamation mark drop followed by the word me, uh, that will drop your avatar from the sky like this. This is my avatar. And you will see that uh, when it... Um, if, if, and when it lands in the garden like this one, that's a great drop. Who is that? Uh, Nuanle Robot. Nuanle Robot. <laughs> great drop. Although, also, I think that's, uh, Sequel Gordster. Great job. So if you land in the garden, you will get your name on the screen for a little bit. Uh, and thank you, Lars. Appreciate you. What's Feathers? It's a, it's a backend framework. We're talking about you today. What's up, Lakshman? Welcome to the show. Um, cool. That's the drop game. The other thing is my overlay. You can see that some people in the overlay have their pronouns set. You can set your country flag. Uh, you can set your badge. Let's see what mine looks like. So right now my country is the United States. Um, I have, uh, the he pronouns. I have the Ethereum badge and I'm, I have a status set. Um, so I'll show you if you want to set your country, you can do exclamation mark country followed by a two character country code. So um, for me, it's the US, for you, whatever it may be. But that's going to set your flag in the overlay. Um, and then if you want to set your team, if you go to this website, the Font Awesome Brand Cheat Sheet, if you click that, any uh, anything on this page, you can pick a name and set that as your badge. Um, I'm going to choose Vue.js because uh, we're talking about Vue 3 today. So if you do exclamation mark team, followed by anything from that page, um, now you'll get that badge next to your name, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then also you can set your pronouns. So if, I, if we do uh, what pronouns, um, you can see these are your options. So you can do exclamation mark pronoun followed by any one of these and it will set those pronouns next to your name. So for me, if I do exclamation mark pronoun uh, key, uh, that will set my pronouns um, as you can see. Ricky says, have I seen go to video? No. We'll have to check it out later. Interesting. Interesting. Although the website for the badges is here. It's the font awesome uh, cheat sheet right there. Anything else? Oh, yeah, you can set your status. So uh, if you, um, yeah, so Alka just mentioned, did you mean? <laughs> uh, and so you can set your status, but it should be uh, uh, safe for work. It should be appropriate. If it is inappropriate, the mods will quickly remove it. You'll be timed out and potentially banned. But if you do exclamation mark set status uh, followed by a status, um, I'll set mine as exploring. Um, and if you have better Twitch TV, I believe we have a view emote in better Twitch TV. Let's see, I don't know if, does, does this work in the statuses? Looks like it does, yeah. So you can use BTTV emotes there as well. 
exploring view. Object, object. <laughs> That's like a uh, uh, vaporwave object, object. Um, awesome. So that's all that. Let's get back into it. So before before I left, we were building this very simple Vite, which means quick. I like it. Let's call it Vite. Uh, before, before I left, we were building this very simple score counter where uh, we built a little component. It has an internal state of the score, and then we can create multiple instances of that. Um, undefined. And uh, for that, we were using this uh, special setup syntax uh, in Vue 3. So we add the setup property to our script. Uh, we can define props like this, and anything we export becomes available inside of the uh, inside the template. So that's great. It's super simple. Uh, honestly, honestly though, I'm actually gonna remove this shorthand because this is still experimental and it's it's kind of it's kind of weird to see. So we're actually gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna move the code back to the traditional composition API way of doing it, where you define all of your your variables inside of setup like this. So inside of here, I have something like playa. And then whatever you return from setup becomes available in the template. So if I return, uh, I return an object and then that has player on it and that makes it available inside of the template. But what I also like about that is we could potentially expose the props. Now, as I'm showing, you don't have to do that. So props become automatically available, available inside the template. But if I do this, if I get props and then I put props on my data, that then allows me to say something like props.name. And I like that a little bit better because it's uh, more clear as to where that name value is coming from. Um, oh, you got the WordPress badge. Nice. Um, <laughs> Is the at click decorator shorthand? Uh, no, so th this is this is Vue.js, and so this is a shorthand for uh, v dash on like this. Um, and uh, in Vue.js, you can say v on, and you can specify any uh, DOM event. What did I just do? You can specify any DOM event, so you can do uh, v on. Uh, uh, let's. I want to show you the autocomplete. V on, actually, I think we get autocomplete with the at sign. Yeah. So uh, literally any DOM event, um, you can automatically add the handler just like that. Uh, and I guess one thing I'll show is instead of modifying these variables directly, uh, let's create some functions. So here inside of my setup, I'm going to create a function called increase. Simple little function that just says uh, player dot score plus equals one like that. So we have our increase function. And then we also have our decrease function. Decrease, and that uh, subtracts one from the score. But now I have these two functions. And if I want to call these functions in my template, I just return them from this object. So I just add increase and decrease like that. Now they these two functions are now available in the template. And now instead of uh, doing this, I can say uh, increase or I can say decrease. Well, thank you, uh, Cypher. That's the revive newt is the, the little lizard going around. So now when this is clicked, it's going to call that function. Um, should work in the same way. Let's do a refresh, increase. Well, I swapped it. <laughs> I did the wrong thing. We're decreasing. Uh, yeah, I, I did the wrong thing. But it, it, it technically works. It did exactly what I told it to do. Uh, well, here's... Here's another cool thing that I haven't exactly demonstrated. Uh, the hot reloading is fantastic. So you can see that I changed the code here, but now the state stays exactly the same. And now this button actually works. So instead of the page needing to fully refresh in the state, like starting over from scratch, uh, Vue has hot reloading. I mean, it's technically a Webpack feature, but the fact that uh, I can I can change anything here and it keeps the state, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, we can we can start the score at zero. I'm not I am not opposed to that. So score zero. Look at that page instantly updates. It's great. Um, that's heckin' nice. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, th this is it. We're gonna move on to do. To, we're gonna make it to do app next. Um, but one thing I'll show you, which people might find a little bit weird, is that this view is is kind of smart about this. So technically, I could write this like this. And it will still work. I don't have to create a um, uh, like a, a an arrow function or a lambda function. I can write it like this. View will detect that and be like, "Oh, you want to invoke that function when when it's clicked." It's going to work exactly the same way. 
the syntax is weird because if you're used to something like React where you're just you're basically passing it a reference to a function, um, you can write it like that. But the nice thing about that is instead of having to create like a closure scope or something like that, if I wanted to pass this player object into that function, I could do that. And view knows uh, how how to do that. It's going to invoke the function and pass in player, and then technically I could get access to player right here. Though I don't need to do this because uh, player is in scope for these functions. But think about like if this was in uh, like a mapped thing or a v4 where you have some variable that only exists inside of that, you could do things like this. Um, this is going to work just fine though. Increase, decrease, great. Um, Test. What's up, ATX? Uh, he got the team react. Nice. But we're gonna go back to this. We're gonna remove uh, this. This is a, this is our basic view three score counter. It's very simple. We show the name. We show the score. Uh, we have two buttons, and those two buttons call these functions, which modify this reactive property. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Do you still need the option props if you return it from setup? Um, so the um, Here's the thing. I actually, I don't need props right there. And if I don't put props there, then I can just access it directly by name. But we were talking about this earlier and we don't, we don't like the fact, uh, props is defined, but never used. Well, there you go. Uh, we don't like the fact that it's kind of just like a magic variable. It makes it a bit harder, uh, to detect like where are props being used and stuff like that. Uh, which is why I explicitly brought in props here and then exposed props on my, on my data. Um, so that way, when I look at the template, I know that's coming from props. Can I remove the props below export default? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, no. You still need to de de define your props. You need to define that this component accepts a prop called name. That's th these are like prop types. Basically, that's a, that's what these are. Readability is better than conciseness. I agree. Um, and, and so you can look at this at a glance and know that it comes from props. Can you re rewrite this using the syntactic? Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we did that already. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I could show it. I mean, do we create a separate file? Let's just create a separate file to show the two different ways. Uh, copy. Paste it. We're going to call it score counter syntax sugar. And I'll show you how we, uh, oh yeah. And, but the, with the, the syntax sugar way, as far as I know, um, the, if we want to expose the props, it'd be something different, but so with the syntax sugar way, we still technically need to say export default props, um, because this defines that we have a prop called name. So that's great. Um, then we create a. Uh, reactive property for player and we have increase and decrease but to make these things available inside of the template uh, we need to export them so we put the word setup there here we say uh, export and then we say export and then we say export so anything you export becomes available inside of the template and that should work uh, let's create let's create an instance of it Sugar, sugar, <laughs> like this. <laughs> Score counter syntax sugar. Um, and then let's just have two. Uh, we're gonna have uh, CJ. Now obfuscate everything. <laughs> we'll have CJ and Alka, but Alka will use the score counter syntax sugar. Um, now, in this case, we no longer have a property called props. Um, I think I have to. You do something like setup equals props, and then. I don't, I, I don't have access to props inside of here, though. That's what it was complaining about. Uh, Name.props is undefined. I mean, technically, with the syntax sugar one, all we have to do is this, because name gets automatically added. And that should work. Yeah, and, and you also... Um, uh, yeah, we showed that here. You don't need... A, in view 3, you don't need a top-level element. You can just put, put all your stuff there. Um, we... <laughs> This, this perturbed me, <laughs> the way that we get props. Like, I don't know how we actually could access... Like, what, what if I wanted to access props inside of one of these functions? How do I do that? Is it just like a magic variable? I don't know. Um, see, this is saying we could just use props.message like this. But 
that did not work <laughs> when I tried it earlier. Um, so, like, let's say I actually wanted, um, yeah, let's say, well, let's make it a computed property, computered. And I wanted, I literally want a thing called props. Um, this just returns props like that. Um, and then can I do props.name? Or does this break? Failed to compile. Identifier props has already done. Oh, I can't call it props. Huh. I can just do. Can I do this? Export props. How do you export a variable that has already been defined? So basically, what this, what the compiler is doing, is it's turning it into a function that looks like this. So it's basically wrapping our code and exposing this props variable. Um. But how do how do I export a variable that already exists? Export props as props. Does anybody know? Props not magic. <laughs> so uh, Im imagine, imagine that there there is uh, somewhere up here there is already a variable called props. Like let's say it's already there. How do I then export it? What's the syntax for that? Does anybody know? Well, I don't want to export. Yeah, let's just try this. Unexpected token curly brace. Yes, exactly. Uh, this code rocks. Yeah, so well, I have we have access to it, but I want to export it, so that way I have access to it in here. How long do you think it'll take to completely forget view two and move to view three? It'll take a while, especially because all of the uh, the associated libraries are still in beta. I mean, I, I don't want that to be the default export. This is the default export. Mm, I, don't, I don't think so. The, in the, the tricky part is I can't say export const. I could do this. Um, I think I could do export const uh, super cool props equals props. I think I can do this. Um, but now um, I need to use super cool props. But why? Because because this is experimental. They'll they'll figure out a better way. But this using this setup property here is experimental. Uh, we showed. This is legitimately how you do it with view three. You have a function called setup, it gets access to props, and then you return an object. This is the view three way of doing it. This is a newer experimental syntax sugar that basically does the same thing. Um, yeah, and then props is not defined. Well, I'm gonna have to ignore that. Um, wait, that's wrong. Export props as props. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, honestly, we'll, we'll just say this. In the, uh, well, I just can't call it props. I think that's the main thing is I, I literally just can't call it props. And so um, we'll say like export const uh, property, <laughs> I guess. We just have to call it something else, uh, equals props. I and I think this will work, um, right? Hello, uh, Itakito. Welcome to the show. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. For this line. Okay. And then, uh, we'll call this properties. Uh, I, I have not shown you I have not shown you what the real benefits of the composition API are yet. All I've shown you is how easy it is to create a component. That's it. Um, if you want to see the benefits, you need a more complex application. You need potentially state that needs to be uh, shared, functions that need to be shared between components. That's, that's where the composition API shines. Okay, so this is how you would do it. 
I don't like it. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's pretend that we did it the actual way. So I have a template. Uh, we show the name, we show the score, we have two buttons, decrease and increase, right? Easy. Um, and then the view three way of doing things is, is instead of having like a data property and a methods property, you just have a function called setup. And whatever this function returns becomes available inside of the component. That's it. That's it. Yeah, we're using Vue.js 3.0. So I have two functions, increase and decrease. They modify this reactive property. That's it. Reactive is kind of like use state if you're used to React. Um, but it's actually reactive in that we can change it. We don't have to do like set state or anything like that. All right. This is our basic score counter. Let's move right along. Let's close VS Code. Um, and then um, let's... <laughs> Let's kill this and move it into that view three directory. Move score counter into view three. I can do this abstravaganza. Cool. All right. We have our score counter. Um, and hey, uh, Nino Sorar, thank you for that Twitch Prime resub. Very much appreciated. What's up, Andrew? I haven't been here in a while. This is true. You've been at school, haven't you? Um, cool. All right. Let's make a new app. We're going to make a to-do app using Vue 3 Composition API. And actually, I'm going to... Um, uh, we'll, we'll make this into YouTube content. Uh, Chris, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. I think that's what it was. Yes, exactly. This code rocks, has the summation... I wanted to be able to do props.name. It was not that easy to do that, which is why we had to give it a new name. But let's create a new app. So I'm going to do view create. Um, we'll call this uh, to do app. And then we're going to say we want to use view three. Here we go. Um, I'm going to go grab my checklist for a to do app. Um, and we'll, we'll build it. We'll turn it into YouTube content. John with the 10 gifted subs. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. <laughs> Gifted subs, ah, um, yeah, because I've built, I've, uh, John is the man, I've, I've built, uh, to-do apps, <laughs> I've built many to-do apps in my life, um, let's look at if we have a view to-do, yeah, there's a view to-do repo, and then this one is, uh, this one has this checklist, I just want to grab this checklist, and that's what, how, that's what we're gonna do, to-do app with a back end, no, we, we're not gonna go that, that deep into it, um, hopefully this will take us maybe, 15, 20 minutes. And then when this is done, we can show how to hook up to the Reddit API. Um, okay, so that's our to-do list. Um, yeah, and I'll show you. Uh, so this is this is like the, um, the view two way of doing it. We did it a little bit different here because we didn't create a separate component, but you can see that in view two, you have a data property. This is where you define your reactive properties. And then if you want methods, you put them on a thing called methods. Whereas in our scenario, we put them all in a single function, return the things that are required, and um, that's, that's using the composition API. Now I'll say this, technically, technically I could have written the code exactly like this and it would still work with view three. Yeah, I know, I know. We've decided to ignore it because my lighting is my lighting is off. I need to get some new uh, new lights. Um, yeah, technically, I could I could do this in a Vue three app and it would work. But I'm showing you the composition API. All right, let's close all this stuff. We're not going to use the experiment. Like I, the the main issue with the experimental uh, syntax sugar stuff is things get weird with props. But um, that's fine. That's fine. Let's make a to do app. <laughs> Uh, and then here in the readme, let's make our to-do list. Does this make sense? Make a to-do app in the to-do app. <laughs> Show a message from the view instance. Create a new to do. Uh, let's let's do this. Level four hype train. Wow. Well, thank you, everyone. Um. 
call a function when the form is submitted, create a string property in our data to store the user input. Watch the property change as we type the input. Yeah, it's slightly different because we don't have data. So create a string property. Just I'll just say this to store the user input. Log the user input when the form is submitted. Create an array property for to dos. A spaceman. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Push the new to-do into the to-dos array, show the to-dos in a list, check the done. This is good. This is good. I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove all of the, uh, like, the default styles and components. Uh, and we're just going to, we're going to do the thing. View three to do app. Great. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of these styles. I'm gonna grab some basic styles. These. These are the basic styles. Whoa, whoa. I did, that, did the wrong thing. <laughs> grab that. Uh, this goes here. Save that. Um, it should be fine. We'll delete the hello world component and then we'll and then we'll get started. Uh, let's start it start it up Ta-da <laughs> All right Who's ready to build a to-do app with Vue 3? Basi I mean, I think for a, a ba we're just going to put everything in the same component. This is going to be like at most a 20-minute video. Um, that's about it. Okay. Here we go. I can actually do... Oh, wow. We have 48 follows. Thank you. Thank you all the new people that have followed. I'm not going to be able to acknowledge all of you, but I but I appreciate you. Um, let's see. We have a stretch. Let's do that. Ooh, we got a posture check. I don't think we did this focus mode, so we can use this focus mode for the to, the to do app that we're about to build. Thank you, Mr. Demon Wolf, for that hydrate and Halo. Lars with the uh, posture check. Thank you, Boyke and John, for those focus modes as well. <laughs> and Loen, thank you for the hydrate. And Nino Sorar with the hydrate as well. We have four focus modes. I don't even know if I'm going to be streaming that long. What's eight times four? Uh, 32? <laughs> is it 32? <laughs> 48? Is it? It's 32. It's got to be 32. Right? <laughs> Thank you all for that hype train. Um, if, I, if I missed any supports, I'm sorry. I appreciate you. There's a lot happening. And we're trying to write code. Uh, we're going to do a 32-minute focus mode. That's fine. Uh, if you're a sub here, you can use this uh, coding content emote. And I encourage you to, to do that um, because we are about to make some, some YouTube content. Um, we do have these, these two things that got parked earlier. Can we use TypeScript? Maybe we'll do that after. Zinc Commando, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Or was it a resub? Two months. Thank you very much, Saint Commander, for that two-month resub. I think we'll have to do it after the to-do app. I just, I need, I need YouTube content. The number of subscribers on YouTube per month is slowly dropping, so I got to create things that people want to watch. All right, <laughs> let's let's do it. Um, let me get all my tabs ready. Content go burr. <laughs> All right. I need like a big Vue.js image. View. Like that. Okay. Is everyone ready? We're making a to do app. We're going to make a to do app. Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, in this video, we're going to build a to-do app with Vue 3. We're just getting started. This is my break timer. If you've been watching YouTube all day, feel free to stand up, take a quick stretch, and um, uh, 
uh, we're going to get into it. So we are going to be using Vue.js 3.0. Now, today is September 21st, 2020, and uh, Vue.js 3.0 has been released, but the ecosystem is still working on things. So um, the Vue router, Vue X, uh, some of the uh, associated plugins and tools are still all in beta. So they're not completely ready for Vue 3 yet, but Vue 3 is usable. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build a super basic to-do app um, using Vue 3 and the composition API. So this is one of the, the biggest changes in Vue 3. Uh, one of the things that I like about Vue 3, it's very similar to like hooks in React, um, but that's what we're going to use to build this app. And I will mention, um, if you look at my YouTube channel, which I guess you're doing right now, <laughs> there's a build a to-do app video. If you search, search for coding garden view to do, uh, there's a video, uh, this one. Um, this uses Vue.js 2.0. We're going to build the exact same app, but we're going to use Vue.js 3.0. Let's get into it. Let's get, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So uh, what I've already done is I've already generated an application. And what I needed to do uh, for that was run um, <laughs> view create uh, to do app. So this... Uh, runs the uh, Vue CLI. Uh, make sure you have at least version 4.5. I think I have version 4.6. And then you choose Vue 3 Preview. I've already done that. We have our app running. And what I've also already done is I have ripped out all of the existing components and all of the existing um, styles. We just have a, a basic app that says Vue 3 To Do App. And then we have our checklist right here. Let's get into it. So first thing I need is a form for creating new to-dos. And and I for this video, I'm just going to put everything in a single component. Uh, it could be a separate video where we start to break things out into separate components and we have props. For now, we're just demonstrating the basics of Vue here. So uh, I need a form. Uh, I'm going to add a form right here. Uh, we're going to need an input that says, um, well, no, we have an input and that input will have a label. Um, I, I can code. Yes, I can code. <laughs> it just says like new to do like this. Um, and then we'll have a button that says uh, add new to do. All right, let's see what this gives us. Do, 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 do. Here, so we have a label, we have an input. I want to be able to say uh, my to-do is to learn view three. When I click add new to-do, that should uh, add it to a list of items here. So we have our basic form, that's great. Um, while we're here, let's go ahead and give this thing a name. So we'll name this new to-do, should be good. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Form, done, check mark. All right, call a function when the form is submitted. Now, um, in Vue.js, you can add event listeners to elements. Um, now, the one way to do it is with v-on, and then you can specify any DOM of it, but a shorthand for that is the at sign. So if you do the at sign, you can specify any event, and then you can specify a function that will get called. So I care about the submit event, and when that is called, um, I wanna call a function that is something like add new to do, right? Okay, so we need this function, add new to do. Now, one of the newest things in Vue.js 3 is uh, the composition API. And for that, instead of having um, options on your object, so instead of having your data and your methods and your computed, so this is known as like object options, right? You have a bunch of properties. Each of those things defines the, the parts of, and pieces of your component. With the composition API, you have a single function called setup, and you do all of the stuff that you want inside of there. So um, let's say I, I, I want to have a function called add new to do. Um, and for now, I'm just going to log uh, form was submitted, right? So I have this function. And when the form is submitted, I want to call that function. So what we do from setup is we return an object. And whatever properties are on this object become available inside of the template. So um, because we want this add new to do function and we've defined it here, we're just going to return it like this. And now what that does is it makes this function available inside of the template. So whenever this form is submitted, this function is going to get called, right? So uh, let's, let's see what happens. Let's open up the console. We'll say, uh, hi, mom, add new to do. The page refreshed. Does anybody know why the page refreshed? <laughs> well, thank you, Ace. I appreciate you. Prevent default. Yeah, yeah, we got to prevent the default action. Um, and uh, one thing I'll show you is Vue has a nice little uh, helper for doing that. So all I got to do is just say dot prevent. 
and it automatically prevents the default action. I don't have to access the event and say event.prevent default. I can just say dot prevent. There's a, there's a few other helpers like that as well. So now that we're preventing the default action, we should see form was submitted. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hi, mom. I need to do form was submitted. Great. So we're calling a function when the form is submitted. Beautiful. Great job, Vue.js. Um, now, um, now, 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 we want to keep track of what the user has typed into the input. Um, and for this, we're going to use what's known as a ref. So we need some sort of reactive uh, variable, right? We need to keep track of, of, when, of what the user has typed in that input. And for that, we'll use a ref. So this is new in Vue.js 3. I'll say import a ref from Vue. Um, now, the cool thing about this is that this is actually reusable outside of Vue.js. This, this is just a nice little function for creating um, uh, properties or, or, or variables or objects that can basically respond to change and you can know when those things are changed. Um, but we need a ref for new to do. So I'll say new to do um, is a ref that starts off as an empty string, right? So this is kind of like having a new to do property on our data that is initialized to an empty string. Um, I'm going to expose new to do to the template by putting it in the object here. And now I'm going to bind the user input to that specific variable. Um, and to do that, I use the v model directive. So on the input, I can say v dash model equals new to do. And uh, what so V model is provided by Vue.js and whatever is here uh, corresponds to something on our component or on our, on our data, basically. And so uh, what this automatically does is it adds a change listener to the input. When the input um, receives a change event, it's going to update this ref behind the scenes. And we're going to see that latest value um, uh, displayed uh, now. This is not actually two-way data binding. It, it looks like it. It's 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 a one-way data binding in disguise. It's ex under the hood. It does exactly what you would do in React, where you uh, add a, an event listener, and then in that event listener, you update state. It's just syntactic sugar. It's still uh, one-way data binding. Um, cool. So we have the string. Uh, let's let's make sure that it's actually working. So um, now that we have v model there. Um, it's it's listening for changes, so we can actually expose that. So if I put a little h2 and I put new to do right here, because this input is bound to this property here, and this property is a ref, this is a reactive property, uh, we should see the latest value there. So um, let's do it. So if I say, hello world, wow, this is so cool. Uh, you can see that that H2 is reflecting reflecting the latest value that, we, that we've that we put in there. Um, wow, wow. Um, actually, should I turn on some effects? Wow. No, the effects are off. Or are they? Effects on, here. Wow. wow. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Um, so uh, you can see that it's it's automatically bound. Um, great. Uh, we we actually don't care about this. I just wanted to show you that by by putting v model here, it automatically updates that thing behind the scenes. Great. Um, so we did that. All right now, log the user input when the form is submitted. So right right now, we're just saying in our submitted function, we're saying form was submitted. But let's say I want to show what the user actually typed into that box. Um, and in this case, we're going to log uh, new to do dot value. And this is actually extremely relevant to what Frapar just asked. So is ref the object or the value in the case of a string? So that's why for for like primitive types, that's why we have this this wrapper. And that's why I have to say dot value. Because, as you know, in JavaScript, uh, strings are immutable, right? So if you want to change a string, you just have to create a new string and, and overwrite uh, whatsoever, whatever is inside of a variable. You can't actually modify the string itself. So whenever you create a ref, this is an object wrapper, and it has a property on it called value, and that is what the latest value is. Um, and so some people don't like this because it's a little bit different from Vue.js or from a Vue 2 where you can just directly modify those properties. In this case, if I want to change it, um, I do have to set new to do.value equals some other thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So that, that should be fine. And basically, whenever I submit the form, we should see whatever the user typed into the form logged to the console. So if I say uh, learn Vue 3, click add new to do, there it is. 
uh, new to do dot value has the latest value. So that's great. We have access to it. Um, now we want to keep track of all the to do's. Great, 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 great. Um, in a I'll say this, if you're interested in creating uh, a, basically an object that has multiple properties on it and you don't want to use a ref, because technically, even if you if you put an object in here, you would still have to say dot value. Uh, we showed earlier, you also have access, access to this thing called reactive. Uh, and reactive is kind of similar to setting up your data. You could do something like uh, data is reactive with an object. And here we could say new to do is an empty string. Um, here we could say to do's is an array. And now that we have this reactive wrapper, wrapper I could say data dot new to do equals a thing or data dot to do's dot push and, and it would work. I wouldn't have to use dot value. But for now, we're just going to use refs because they're simple, easy, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, and, and so that's the other thing um, that I like about the composition API is you don't have to worry about this. Um, I mean, it, even, even so, in Vue.js, it automatically binds your methods for you, so this is usually what you expect it to be. But in the Composition API, you don't even have to worry about that. There is no this, because it's basically whatever is accessible inside of that scope, that's what you modify and change. Um, all right, what were we going to do? Create an array. Yeah, yeah, so we, we now need... Um, an array of to dos, and I'm gonna sh I'm just gonna create another ref. So I'm gonna say uh, to dos is a ref that starts off as an empty array, just like that. And then I want to make those to dos available inside of my template. So I'm gonna return it right here, like that. Um, and what else does it uh, create an array? Yeah, we did that. Great. So this this is how I create a reactive array. Uh, we're now going to push a new to-do into the array whenever we say add new to-do. So instead of just logging it, um, we're going to say todos.value.push. And we're going to push in an object where done is initially false. And uh, the... Do we, do we, we have a property on it. I guess we can call it content. The content or the value uh, is new to-do.value. So... What we're doing is when that function is called, it just pushes an object into the array. Uh, like I mentioned, we do have to use dot value here. Maybe maybe after this video, I'll use reactive and I'll show you how we would do it with reactive. You wouldn't have to use dot value. You could just use your state, etc. But this is fine. This is fine. So we push it into the array. That's great. Now we want to show that array on the page, you know, that list of items. Um, so we've we've pushed it in. Done is false. Now we actually want to show the list. Uh, and this is where we use the v4 directive. So I'm going to add a little div right here. And basically, I want to repeat this div for every item in the to-dos array. Um, and this is where we use v4. Um, v4 will say item in, well, we can say to-do in to-dos. So this is going to uh, repeat this element for every to-do in the to-dos array. Um, and to-dos like we showed, was exposed on our data here. So it, sh it should work. Um, let's say we just have like an H3 that has uh, to do.content. So to show the content, we need handlebars. And we'll say to do.content. Um, and then we also need some sort of key here. Um, my editor is complaining because I don't have a key set. Um, let's actually just add an ID. And we're going to set this to uh, date.now. Now, in the real world, you wouldn't do this. Your IDs would probably come from a database. They would be unique. This is going to be unique enough because I'm the only one using this and the date should be unique when I add an item. But just know that this needs to be unique, a unique value. So right here, I'll say um, key equals um, to do dot ID. And to actually pass that value down, I need to I need to bind it. So if I the, the syntax for that is vbind like that, um, but you can leave off vbind and just put the colon. Um, now, yes, and for part has another good question. With the composition API, inside of the template, do I have to say dot value? You don't. So um, you can see that here, I can just say new to do. I don't have to say new to do dot value. And then here, I can just say to do's. So uh, the the render function here, and that's basically what this is, even though it, it looks like HTML, uh, this actually gets compiled into a component render function. The render function knows that it needs to access dot value in order to iterate over it, but you can, you can leave that off. Here's another quick stretch. 
and we're almost done. We're kind of we're kind of home free. So this should show um, all of the to dos. And actually, I don't know why I did this, but this this needs this should be a this should be a list item, right? We we have a list of to dos, and we should put this in an unordered list. Here we go. This is better. I like this better. We have a list, and then we're repeating a list item for every item. All right. So if I say uh, learn view three, and I submit it, boom, it's in the list. Um, now. I, uh, I'm asking you, you the viewer, how can I clear this form, right? So right now it says learn view three. I clicked add, but it's still there. Typically a good user experience is to clear it. How do I clear it? How do I, how do I do that? Any guesses? Form.reset. Oh, uh, that probably would do it. I don't have a reference to the form though. <laughs> uh, you the viewer, clean the very nice form one, two, three. <laughs> Right, so let's let's think about this. Uh, not to, not to dos dot value. So to dos is the is the list. What we want to clear is what's bound to the input. So because the input is bound to new to do, yeah, Limeotes has it. So because this is bound to new to do, if I say new to do dot value uh, equals an empty string, that'll clear it out. So uh, push it into the array and then say new to do dot value equals nothing. And because the input is bound to new to do, the input should clear. So uh, let's clear this. Yeah, you, you all got it. You got it. You got it. Um, and then I'll say learn view three. Boom. Input cleared. Well, that's awesome. Uh, you absolutely could add like an element reference and do form clear, but yeah, we're, we're not, we're doing it the view way in this case. We're, we're modifying the thing that we're, that we're bound to. So that's great. Um, let's look at our to-do list. Uh, yeah. So we're showing the to-dos, uh, check done on a to-do to mark it as done. Awesome. Okay. Now things are gonna get a little more complex. So uh, we can show many things. We could say like, uh, learn the composition API. We'll add it, um, learn JavaScript, not necessarily in this order, but what I want is whenever I click on an item, I wanna put a line through it so that we that way we show that that thing is done. Um, and we can see that every to-do has a property uh, called done, which is initially false. So here's what we want. Um, when we click the item, so actually when we, when we click the text itself, so I'll say uh, when this text is clicked, we'll say mark, uh, we'll say toggle done. And we want to toggle done that specific to do. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just pass in this to do to this function toggle done. Um, and you'll notice that I'm, I'm not creating an arrow function. There's no sort of like closure scope or anything like that. I literally say I have a function called uh, toggle done and I'm passing in this specific to do that I clicked on to that function called toggle done. So now I need a function toggle done in my uh, component that takes in a to do and uh, we just toggle it. So we'll say to do dot done uh, equals not to do dot done. Great. Uh, and then now we need to expose this function toggle done uh, to the template and that should do it. So I'll save that. Um, we'll say learn view three. We'll add it and you can't see it, but I'm pretty sure it's working. Uh, but to actually show that it's working, I'm going to, I'm going to do some, uh, some, uh, uh, bound CSS, some bound styles. Um, do I have that in my, uh, in my to do? How do you make how do you make brain go fast? <laughs> uh, show a line through the to do. So we're technically we're marking it as done, but we need to reflect that in the UI. And for that, we're going to use uh, we can use a style bind, or actually no, we'll, we'll use a we'll use a class binding. So let's say I have a class called done, and um, dot done. Yeah, that's how CSS works. Oof. <laughs> So I have a class called done, uh, and then we're just going to do text decoration as line through like that. MB dealer, thank you for the thousand bits. That's a lot of bits. I appreciate you. Um, but um, yeah, so if the element has the class done, then it's going to have a line through it. And so now we can just we can just bind that. So um, I can do colon uh, class and then pass in an object. So the way class bindings work is um, you specify the names of the class that you'd like to apply to this element. So in this case, I want to apply the done class to that element. So I want to say done, but I only want to apply that class if to, to, to do dot done is true. So uh, 
I specify the name of the class I want to apply is done, and then I can specify an expression that if that expression evaluates to true, add that class to the element. So I'll just say to do dot done like that. So if to do dot done is true, apply the done class to this element. Um, and look at that. It works. And I can I can click it all day long. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> or I can add new things. Uh, learn uh, the composition API. Wow. <laughs> Uh, and we can also mark those done too. Um, I mean, technically I should show like a cursor. So if I give this a class of to do, um, let's say a to do has a cursor of pointer. That way the user knows that they can, they can click on it like that. Uh, this code rocks says this is experimental. Let's take a look. Do, 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 do. Yes, we, sh we showed this earlier. I'm not going to get into this just because it it potentially is confusing, but let it be known that there's actually an even uh, I want cleaner. <laughs> there's, a, there's another way of using the composition API in that setup function um, with this, but we're not going to get into it because we were using it earlier. There's some caveats to it. But OK, so we can mark things done. That's great. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Yeah, and so it's adding and removing the class. We can look in the in the DOM inspector to actually see what happens. So you can see that right now, this H3 has a class of done, but if I click on it, it removes that class. So uh, basically that, that object that we specified, if to do, eval if done evaluates to true, apply the class called done. That's basically what's happening there. It's great, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> so this says, uh, if this and so this this can be any valid expression uh, on the inside of this object. So this this could be a function call. This could be multiple ands and ors. But if this expression evaluates to true, then done uh, the done class gets applied to that element. Great. Um, so that's awesome. And then let's let's uh, delete to do. So inside of here, I want a little button that says not a but. <laughs> Demonetize. Uh, I want a button that says uh, remove to do. Um, and so when I click that button, it should remove the to do from uh, the uh, from the array. Um, and uh, let, let's 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 do this. So uh, very similar to whenever we we toggle the toggle the thing, um, we want to say when this button is clicked, we want to remove to do with to do. Now technically, I could pass in the to do. But probably what is easier is to pass in the index, because if I pass in the index, then I can just splice it from the array. <laughs> Good job. Uh, so I'm actually going to I'm going to I'm going to get access to the index here inside of this uh, v4. And the way you do that is by saying uh, the element comma index. And now that I have the index, I can pass in the index and then we'll use that. So now I need a function called remove to do. That's just going to go right here. Remove to do gets access to the index, um, and then we just modify the array. So we'll say uh, to do's dot value dot uh, slice return a section of the array splice remove an element from the array. So we want splice. So we want to splice that specific index, and we want to splice one of them. So this function will now remove one specific element at that index, uh, and we should be good to go. Now, uh, if you're coming from the React world. Uh, you're probably used to uh, immutable state, right? And and for a remove, you probably would have done a filter. Technically, we could do that. We could we could do a filter, but there's no need because to dos is reactive. the The template knows whenever it changes. So if we push into it, if we remove from it, the template is automatically going to update. So that should handle that. Um, so we'll say learn view three, learn the composition API. And we'll say build a to-do app. All right. Uh, so I can mark them done. I can unmark them done. That's great. Can I remove it? Yes, I can. <laughs> um, and that works just fine. Awesome. So I think that's it. I think that's it for our basic to-do app. Uh, oh, one more thing. Add a, add a button to mark all to-dos as done. Um, so uh, let's do that. So we need a button probably right here that just says like mark all done. Um, and then when we click this, we need to call a function that's like uh, mark all done. And then that function should mark all of them as done. So let's do that here. And to do that, 
uh, we just need to iterate over the to-do. So I'll say to-dos.value.foreach. Dot dot so for every element in that array, we're going to get the, um, the to-do. And we're going to say to-do dot done equals true so we literally just iterate over the array and modify every element to set it to true and that should do it uh, and then we'll just make this function available um, in the template like that so we say uh, learn view add it <laughs> I have all of these auto completes uh, learn react sure why not you can learn all the things learn the composition API great uh, but if I say mark all done then it now marks them all as done Awesome. Uh, username unknown is saying, can you do method definitions instead of a standard function? Um, specifically with the the composition API and setup? Uh, no, <laughs> because basically what you need to do is you return an object and whatever is on that object gets exposed inside of the function, uh, the component itself. Now, could we technically create a methods option and does this get merged? I actually have no idea, and I don't think I'd recommend it. I would say if you're gonna use the composition API, uh, stick to that. Don't try to use the older view two stuff. You still can, but yeah. We could add remove all to do's. It actually is very, very simple. Um, we just set the array to empty. So we'll say uh, remove all. Remove all. This is, this is bonus. This is not in the to-do list. Uh, get bonus content for watching the video this long. Remove all to-dos. Re remove only done to-dos. <laughs> uh, this is this is feature feature creep in a nutshell, but we'll, we'll do this one. Remove all. And remove all is uh, simple enough. We literally just reset the array uh, to be nothing. Bonus content! <laughs> um, but this is where we'll say to-dos.value equals uh, nothing. Just reset it to an empty array, and that will just wipe them all out. So we'll expose this, and uh, it should be good. So we'll say, uh, hello world, how are you? Wow. And we'll say remove all, and it just removes them all. <laughs> um, awesome. This is great. To do's dot length equals zero. Would that work too? Uh, to do's dot value dot length? Can you clear an array by setting its length to zero? Let's see. Hmm, does this work? Yeah, that's another way to do it. I, I like doing this though, <laughs> I like doing that. All right, I think that's it. Uh, this is a super basic, super basic duck introduction to Vue.js 3 and the composition API. This idea of creating reactive values, this idea of creating functions, uh, and then this idea of exposing functions and reactive values to your template, and then using those things inside of your template. We also showed uh, like class bindings and a few other things. Now I will say there is a lot more to the composition API. Um, I'm just showing it in a very small, very simple application. Um, the composition API itself really starts to shine when you have a larger app with more functionality that needs to be shared between components um, and, and different things like that. But that's for a future video. This is just basic view three composition API stuff. Yeah, and so that's the other things I didn't get into. Computed properties, watching properties. I'll, I'll tell you that Behind uh, view is also these functions called like computed. So if I wanted to create a computed property, I would use j just this little function here. Um, if I wanted to watch something, I could use that little function there. Um, so basically all of, all of the ways you're used to creating things as options on a component, you could use these functions instead. Yeah, and so ref is very similar. Yeah, so uh, uh, that, uh, that's Red Cullen just mentioned. Ref is very similar to use state, but it's better. <laughs> This this isn't a video comparing it to React, but I'll I'll tell you this: um, refs, uh, you you they they can be defined in any order. They can be conditional in React. They can't be. I'm not I'm not gonna get into that. But yes, this is very similar to use state, but better. All right, that's it. That's all. Thank you for watching this video, which was a basic introduction to Vue.js three and the composition API. But like I said, there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more to come. Watch my channel. There'll be more videos. All that good stuff. Bye, YouTube. Everyone say bye to YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, join us here on Twitch where we, uh, we have fun. We have fun like this. <laughs> bye, YouTube. Content. All right. See you later. Is, this is the part of the video where uh, a suggested video pops up and then the subscribe button pops up too. Bye. <laughs> bye, YouTube. Love you. <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. All right. Um, I I kind of have to get to work, but I think I just want to fly through uh, building a, a Reddit clone really quick because I think so. I I really I really really didn't get into the benefits of the composition API. I think we have to save that for a we have to save that for another video, another live stream. I mean, maybe this can be Vue.js week. Maybe we just do more Vue on on uh, Wednesday on the next stream. But what I want to show you really quick, excuse me. Let's call an API. And I think I think I might cheat. Let's do this. I'm going to grab the template from the last time we did this. If you look at the Vue abstravaganza, don't we have fun with Redis and Vue? What? <laughs> Vue all week. Yeah, yeah. Somehow I was able to follow you to the T. That's good to hear, Zamar, please. <laughs> I, I hope I did a good enough job explaining things. Yeah, we built a Reddit client. Oh, it looks like we didn't even get that complex. So uh, we generated an app. Oh, but that requires a router because we want to be able to show, we want to be, uh, be able to allow you to go to different subreddits. Oh, all right. I want to, I want to show the basics though, because you're probably curious. How do I get API stuff into my view app? It's honestly just as easy as you think it would be because we have reactive state, right? We call an API. doesn't matter when or where we call that API, but as long as we modify a reactive property, it's going to show up. Um, well, I, I don't want to make my own router. There is a view router. It would take some setup though, because it's currently in beta. So the view CLI doesn't automatically add it. We could add it ourselves and setup is like a two minute thing, but I have to go to work. So uh, we're going to pull data from programmer humor on Reddit. We're not going to review the, the the jokes and the memes just yet. Uh, and in fun fact, if you go to any subreddit and do dot JSON, uh, that actually just instantly gives you back a, a JSON response. Yeah, like that. Cool. So I'm going to hit this API. We're going to show some programmer humor stuff on the page. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> let's create a let's create a new app. View create uh, Reddit programmer programmer humor. We're just uh, initially, we're just going to show the current posts on Programmer Humor. In the future, we can make it so that you can go to a specific subreddit. We can show the things from a subreddit, all that good stuff. Uh, program Programmer Humor. <laughs> What's up, Katoli? And hello, Bantux, who says, I learned something new. That's good. Um, cool. And so for those of you that didn't see me generate the app earlier, this is how we use Vue 3. We just say... Uh, Right now, the CLI, we say uh, view three preview. In the future, it's gonna be similar to view two where you can choose if you want the router and stuff like that. Right now, it's super basic. Yeah, it, 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 it automatically adds the uh, access control allow origin header uh, to the response. Cool. I guess we could try to do a we could try to do a speed run, a view three speed run. I feel like I could do it in five minutes. I can show all of the current posts from Programmer Humor on the page in five minutes using view. Wait, what yo? Yo? What you talking about yo? <laughs> uh, how many minutes is? That's twenty two minutes. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Challenge accepted. Uh, let's do seven minutes. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll basically need to do everything. A quarter of leap. What's one, three, three, that's 10 minutes divided by two, six, six, eight point five. Async await with loops. I'm going to use async await in this. We're not going to use like an await in loop. Um, 11 minutes. We can do an 11.142 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do seven. That's seven times 60. 420. So 420 seconds on the clock. Uh, Great. 
Let's do this. I want to show the countdown timer there. Great, 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 great. Um, and we're going to reset it. Okay. I think, uh, do I still have the API here? Cool. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. In this seven-minute speed run, I'm going to attempt to build a, build a super basic uh, web page using Vue.js 3 that lists all of the current uh, jokes and memes from Reddit r slash programmer humor. Um, we have here the API endpoint, which is going to give us back the current posts. Let's go. We've only got six minutes. So uh, this is just a newly generated uh, Vue 3 app. Um, it has some basic stuff in it. So it has like a hello world component. We're just going to remove all of that. Um, let's get rid of that um, and get rid of all of that. Just get, get rid of everything basically to start from scratch. Um, and uh, with the uh, with view three, we're going to use the composition API. So in this component, we have a setup function. Great. Um, uh, when the app loads, we want to make a request to the Reddit API to get the la latest list of all the posts. Now, in old view, we used to do uh, like uh, component did mount or created different things like that. Um, with the composition API, I can just put my code at the top level. So, um, I mean, actually, do I need an async iffy? Do I need an? A I mean, yeah, we'll create an async function. So I'll have an async function called uh, get posts function get posts um, and this just makes a request so we'll just fetch it to that URL like that get the response um, and then for now we're gonna get back the uh, the JSON response.json uh, we'll log it and then we'll use it um, so um, when the component is mounted and loads we'll just call get posts like that Done. So this is kind of like uh, it's kind of like doing it in the created uh, lifecycle method, um, but uh, it's just getting called when the when the app is created. Um, let's just add like a little h1 that says programmer humor. Great. All right. So if we start this thing up, is it not started? I thought it was started. No, it's not started. <laughs> npm run uh, serve. Here we go. Uh, you, we, we could do on mounted, but technically an API call doesn't need to wait for the component to mount. It should be done on created. So that's why I'm just doing it at the top level. Okay. So it says programmer humor and we get back the data. Awesome. So if we look at it, it has a data property. So we'll do dot data that has a children property. And then each of those has a data property. Okay. So if I do data dot children, that's the actual Reddit post. So now we need, we need that. Um, and for that, I need a reactive property. So I'm going to import a ref or ref, the ref function uh, from view. My brain is sweating. <laughs> um, and so what I need is a ref for all of the posts. So we'll say uh, posts is a ref that starts off as an empty array. So uh, when the component is first created, there are no posts. We're going to get those posts, and then we're going to set them. Uh, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, post.value equals json.data.children, like that. And that's going to get that's going to give us each of the values um, inside of the, the JSON. Um, let's go ahead and just um, log the JSON so we get what the properties are. And then from this setup function, we need to return an object that has uh, posts on it. So that way we can access the posts inside of the template. So this returns posts up here. We're going to like iterate over the posts. Um, so we'll just have like a little div. Uh, we'll need to repeat this for every post in posts. Um, let's hope that the post has an ID. Uh, so the key is like post.id. Um, we're going to show the title of that post in like an h3. So this will show us uh, post.title. And then we're going to show if it has an image, um, we'll show the image. And we're going to bind the source to post.image. Right? Something like that. It should be, it should be it. <laughs> uh, and we only want to show this image if um, post.image is a thing. And we want to link this whole thing to uh, the post itself. So we're going to link it 
uh, to post.url. Now, these variables don't exist. <laughs> we, need, we need to create them. And actually, I'm not even going to set it on my data um, because we, we basically need to create an array of all the posts that have an ID, a URL, a title, and an image. Um, OK, so let's just figure out how we're going to do that because we, we are logging the data still. And it has, uh, so data.children. OK, so we're going to map over that. Two minutes, two minutes, OK. so. <laughs> Uh, we need to say uh, post.value equals data.children.map. That's going to give us each child. And then we need to uh, return an object that has the properties uh, ID. Um, that has the property uh, URL, title, and image. URL, title, image. Like that? You're all eh, it should be good. Okay, so now if we look at child, um, each child has a data property. So a child dot data dot ID. I guess we can look over here. Child dot data dot. We only have a minute. A minute left. Dot ID, yeah, yeah, ID is, ID is unique. That should be good. So uh, ID is uh, child.data.id. Uh, URL, I know this is going to need to be a template string because we have like a permalink. So HTTPS colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash uh, child.data. I think it's permalink. Yeah, permalink. I, as you can see, I've talked to the Reddit API before. <laughs> dot permalink, uh, the title, child.data.title probably. Title, self text, preview, source. Is this going to work? 403 per forbidden. Oh no, how do we get the image? We only have 13 seconds left. How do, how do we get the image? This image is not working. Um, oh, if we look at dot URL, that's the image. Okay, okay. Four seconds left. This is it. So image is child dot data dot URL. All right. Uh, data is not defined. What? <laughs> oh, this is Jason. We're, okay, we're out of time, but it's going to work. It's going to work on the first try. Uh, before I go to the app, let's just give us some basic styles. Um, we'll set the, the font to sans serif. Sans serif. Font size. Uh, really big. Like, um, I don't know. Uh, two RAM is fine. And then uh, text align center. All right, it's just gonna work. Hey, it works. <laughs> so, uh, programmers, uh, non-programmers watching me code, other programmers watching me code. <laughs> uh, correlation does not imply causation. Uh, is it a coincidence? I don't think so. Stop testing your software. Bugs found, time spent testing software. That's funny. Uh, should take no more than 10 minutes. Boss. Can you take this ticket? Yes, of course. Looks like an easy one. Me after having a closer look. Shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. <laughs> so we did it. It's, it's ugly. It's 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 super ugly, but we did it. Um, we could add some more styles, um, but we, it, it's, yeah, we, we've done it. We basically, uh, we call an API, we get the data out that we want, we put it on this post variable, and then we render those posts in the UI. We're done. We're done. We did it. Seven minutes. Uh, let's make it look a little bit nicer. I think that's what we'll do for like the next two minutes. <laughs> yeah, the 10 minutes one is good. Cause that's basically what we just did. Uh, but let me give this like a class of post. Um, and um, do it. Yeah. <laughs> so a post will have like a width, I don't know, of like 80%. And then the body we can make, oh, I did text emphasis instead of text align. That's not a thing. Uh, but the body could be a flex box. Oh, no, we don't even need it to be a flex box. We could say uh, the width. Actually, let's do this. No, 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 no. Post has a width of 80% and a margin of zero auto. So that should align each post to the center like that. Great. Um, and uh, syntax wax. Thank you for those 75 bits. Who says morning, CJ? Morning. How's it going? Um, let's, I guess, like add an outline. Two pixels, solid gray look at that um 
And then any image inside of the post should have a max width of 100%. Like that. Quick stretch. Five pixeled dotted magenta <laughs> in, in uh, Bear Cool. Thank you for those 100 bits. Uh, why wouldn't I do source equals whatever? Oh, okay. So uh, you um, you do not and you do not use uh, handlebars inside of your uh, attribute uh, attributes that you're setting in Vue.js. So in Vue, if you want to set something to be some reactive data or some data behind the scenes, you use bind syntax no matter what. Um, what's the difference between outline and border? Uh, outline is not used to calculate the width, but border is used to calculate the width. I don't know. This is it. This is what you get. <laughs> we'll add a little bit of padding. Um, I can also do like a max height. Let's add a max height of like 400 pixels. And we'll add a border radius too. Border radius, 10 pixels. We'll add some padding of two rims and margin of one rim. All right, here we go. Dang it, I broke it. I think the margins broke it. Um, we can add margin top and bottom. So top and bottom, one rim, left and right, nothing. Wait, is that how that works? Opposite. Top and bottom, nothing, one rim, left and right. Oh, oh, oh this. Because <laughs> the post itself, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, this is it. I messed up. Yes, thank you. Thank you Thank you for that. I'm overriding auto. There we go. Wait, our border radius didn't get set. Oh, because we're setting uh, outline instead of border rate, um, instead of border. What happens if we set border? Does that mess everything up? No, it's fine. Here we go. Good enough. <laughs> this is fine. Uh, do not confuse your Google search with my medical degree. Sweats in computer science degree. Because uh, that's what we do. We search. Okay, this is it. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you, everyone, for watching. If you like things like this, uh, tune in on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Coding Garden. We build apps. And this week is View Week. So all week long, we're going to be building uh, apps with View. Today was super basic stuff. We just talked about the basics of the Composition API, but we're going to dive deeper. We're going to show how, how it's useful. We're going to create reusable Composition API functions, all that good stuff. Tune in Wednesday to take part in that. And uh, I appreciate you all. Thanks for being here. And everyone say bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Uh, content. Bye, YouTube. I realize we're on Twitch right now, but we just made a YouTube video. We made a challenge video. <laughs> um, it was good to see you too, Robin. We'll see you on Wednesday. Purchase this YouTube. Nice, Murdoch. <laughs> all right. Bye. Okay, um, we're going to raid somebody, so stick around for the raid. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. This was fun. Um, like I said, to, this week is View Week. We're doing nothing but View. Wednesday, we'll do more complex stuff. Um, all this code I wrote today will show up on GitHub. <laughs> I would say keep an eye on github.com slash coding garden. I'm going to create some new repos. Uh, if you join the Discord, I'll post uh, links in the, in the Discord to all the codes that we wrote today. It's view week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, your raid messages are here. So if you go here, um, if, you, if you go here, this is your raid message. If you are a sub, it looks a little bit like that. Yeah. Andrew's got it. Uh, and this is your raid message if you are not a sub. Like so. Ta-da! All right. I appreciate you all. Stick around for the raid. Wherever we go, uh, be nice. Share the love. The lub, all that good stuff, and drop a follow if you if you like what they're doing. Uh, as I mentioned, tune in Wednesday for more view, and then Friday for more view. It's view week. <laughs> Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here is here is this. <laughs>
gonna go somewhere um i don't know exactly well i'm looking for someone to raid right now i think i'm gonna find somebody that has like either one or zero viewers in science and tech if anybody has any suggestions let me know uh we're gonna surprise them we're gonna we're gonna overwhelm them with a very large raid um if you have a suggestion it has to be somebody that has like two viewers or less It's all, it, it, it's sometimes hit or miss because they, because because they don't, um, they might not be watching the chat. Yeah, I thought about raiding Code Phobia. He has about twenty people watching him, right? Ryan Tupo has five. Who is Ryan Tupo? Uh, relearning Java Day Six. Interesting. Interesting. Any other suggestions? I want somebody with, like, no viewers. <laughs> Codephobia has two? Really? Uh, we'll, we'll raid Codephobia if, that, if that's the case. But he is known. He is a friend of the Coding Garden. Did everyone, everyone just stop stop watching so we would go raid them? <laughs> oh, he has four. That's fine. We'll, we'll raid Codephobia. Um, it's not as interesting, though, because Codephobia knows how to handle a large raid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we'll share the love. We're gonna go over there. Alrighty, everyone. See you there. <laughs>